Um, is there anything else you want her to know about the shift and moving forward? She's done very well on the patience of that. I think uh, a lot of you all are doing a lot better, enjoying your time that you have right now and to keep doing that, just empowering yourself and others. Fantastic. Best approach. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> um, then we have uh, some questions. Uh, there is a video um, from a man in Russia that holds a shard of glass up to his phone and you can see a UFO ship, but it is not visible without the glass. And the question is, is this real or a hoax? It looks as though it's a, a magician of playing with a prism of the glass with the phone and it's a, kind of a magician type thing where it look, kind of looks like it could be real. And it leaves the imagination to the one to think if it is or is not. Mm, absolutely. Um, so that's just growing seeds of curiosity for people to explore? Yes, it's just a growing curiosity of how do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, how'd that happen? Mm -hmm. Is that real? Well, questioning what is real and what isn't real is very important, I think, for humanity at this point. Right, and everything's being questioned, which is good. It should be. Nice awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, is there any way that you can tell us um, how to actually see the ships, the spacecraft that is in our stratosphere or atmosphere? Uh, you feel them. Uh, anytime someone looks in the sky and swears a cloud looks like a ship, and if you feel that, then yes, you're looking at a ship. Mm. I mean, there's cloaking done. Um, plus, you know, the 3D eyes aren't really allowed to see the, the different presence within the uh, retina of the eye. But you can with your third eye. And that takes just some trusting within yourself and the feeling all connection. And if you feel it and you're looking at a shape, it's there. So, I mean, the, as far as uh, actual seeing ships, they can be seen. There's some big auras out um, in the skies. Some of that is a plane of governments um, playing around. Some is us, but it, you can tell the difference by how you feel. You know, it's just like when you hear something that gives you the chills or you get a, a, a loving feeling. There's a difference because we're family. Mm. Well said. And so then to clarify, just being strong with our intuition and going with our intuition will always serve us, including. Right. Sometimes, right? Yes. Our uh, intuition is your guiding post, is your compass. Yes. Fantastic. So the other question was, um, do we have a third eye? And if so, how do we get to open it? Yes, there's, of course, a third eye, if you want to call it an eye, or you can call it a more of an inner knowing within your own mind. And as far as opening it is to trust and to any time you have a thought that you think is out there, instead of thinking it's out there, to explore that thought. Go with it. Instead of thinking it's hogwash. Those intuitive thoughts that come that you push away is really more likely your higher self, yourself, your team coming through that you're pushing away. That's how. 
could it be said that when you, one opens their third eye, it is more opening up their senses to all rather than seeking out um, a physical image or imagination uh, of imagery? Yes, it's, I mean, it can be done anyway. What people have crutches to try to think that they need this, need that to open up the third eye when it's really an inside job. But yes, senses is another sense. It's simple as seeing or smelling or tasting. It's just another sense to uh, to strengthen. You know, if you want to hear better, you know, blind your, blindfold yourself and literally listen. You know, if you want to see better, uh, put earmuffs on and really focus. So as far as uh, the third eye, close your eyes and really feel. And if someone's talking to you, listen. Don't just, you know, not listen, but actually listen. Fill your thoughts, uh, write them down. And if you can start seeing what is an ego thought or what is a thought of, that we have given. It's uh, understanding the senses and just uh, letting it expand. Mm, expansion is always great growth, right? So I love that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so then another question was <clears throat> about the royals. Does Megan and Harry have bad intentions or committed crimes against humanity? And is Megan using Harry? Well, what you see more than likely isn't them. And there has been some crimes done, but not to the effect of uh, some other parts of the royal family. Um, they did try to pull themselves away, but that was already in clone. They are already in uh, the true Megan and Harry are not what you see in a public eye. Tell me about the original Harry. Uh, what happened there? He is his mother's son and really saw what was going on and um, tried his way to pull away and what else to but to marry an American and, uh, you know, go against a royal uh, understanding of that, but, you know, staying within the certain bloodline. Um, and then some danger happened and they pulled away, but he was really... He's a, he's a humanitarian trying to help, and um, it got kind of scary for them, and they are being protected, and what you see now is not them. Oh, I see. So uh, when did they leave the public eye and be cloned? Looks as, as though it was uh, the birth of their child. It was uh, it's almost like that child isn't theirs. It was uh, it seemed to be it was around that time of the of the uh, of her being pregnant and birthing the child right before, right after. It was during that time. Okay. And so, um, so what happened to the originals? They are being protected like, their, like his mother is. Oh, I see. Um, and so is, is Megan using, the original Megan, is she using Harry or is she have true? No, they, they truly, the, the, the originals of the two, they are, they have a love relationship. Um, they do, and they're supportive of each other. What the, the what you see in the public eye is what what is being played out for. Uh, I wouldn't call it entertainment. Call it that. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just to play out, um, and uh, to keep things rolling uh, as a movie should go. You know, this or that. I mean, it's just a uh, yada 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 type. Moving on. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, how many versions of Harry is there? How many times has he, has he been cloned? I see once. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you want us to know about them? Uh, Harry's original intent was to carry on what his mother started. And um, he also wanted to pull away from the royal family as, you know, and fell in love with someone. He didn't, you know, purposely try to pick somebody who was probably not going to be accepted within the royal bloodline, but, or the royal family, but uh, it just happened that way. And um, when the scrutiny started and he needed he need to protect, um, and, you know, and he is in protection of that. And there's been all kinds of different things said about the two of them, all kinds of different stories. Uh, but they, I guess you can call it, um, we help them, help protect them. Um, and they remove themselves. And then what you see now is the clones carrying on what is being carried out and forth in the public eye. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, another question is, um, how does someone tap into the knowledge to communicate with the other side? They're referring to psychics. They want to know how to know whether someone's a fake um, and someone's genuine. Um, they really just want to understand um, how to connect into the other side. They want to understand how to connect themselves to the other side or when they're talking to an individual who's connecting with the other side? Well, I think they should be able to connect in with them for themselves, but when they are hiring and seeking people to be able to do that for them, how does it work now? Well, their intuition. If they really work on uh, their intuition and their third eye, they can understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like there is a lot of people out there that are scamming people for money. And I think this person was just concerned about, um, you know, how can you know the difference? Um, I think she just doesn't want people to, to, to waste their time and money on the fakes. Well, that person probably needs to understand themselves more and um, feel their own intuition. If they do feel that, they'll be able to see if someone's really, you know, pulling their leg or pulling their arm and not being truthful. It's once you, uh, you know, trust your own intuition, you'll be able to see more who's truthful, who's not. It's, <laughs> it's gotta be your own, the, the, that person's own understanding of that. Because, um, you know, there's strictures out there and they can be good. But if you truly want to know, you got to have your own intuition and understanding and use your own self as your compass. Absolutely. Um, and so um, when you do trust yourself, uh, how is the best way um, from your perspective is the, the easiest way to be able to connect into the other side? How does one go about that? That sounds like a question that is uh, uh, whoever asked that question needs to just love themselves and trust themselves to know that they're always connected. Mm. Yeah. They're always connected. There is not how do you go to the talk to the other side. It's around them all the time. It comes through music, it comes through thoughts, it comes through animals, it comes through other people. It's not always, you know, something that you see in a corner of your eye. It's all around you all the time. Observe it. That's your part of your intuition. Observe everything all the time. All around you. Even the things you see on TV, what comes through. Uh, messages come that way. You know, if you're thinking something and then all of a sudden it's said somewhere, well, there you go. You know, it's uh, just uh, trusting your own intuition. You can practice with that by doing a little exercise of uh, just um, let trying to let whatever thoughts come to your mind and write them down. Write them down 
every thought. Be amazing how many thoughts you have. And then another thought will come because a, a thought of you don't usually think will be there. And that's some intuition to see. And it's just kind of deciphering through the active monkey mind that goes through the minds and it's sorting them out for the message or intuition coming through. I hope that answers the question. It was great. Thank you so much. Um, they also have a question about tarot cards. Are they completely random or is there some truth to the messages that has been communicated? If the person given the tarot card reading is a true intuitive, they really don't need the cards, but they use them as a crutch. And the cards themselves, if they're respected and uh, it kind of like, you know, just using anything of crystals or anything that's a crutch. Um, if, you know, the person is intuitive enough, that can actually give them the confidence to give a reading and give it to a more precise way. As far as the cards, um, they can come forth, but with like, intuition and the right intention. It all comes down to intuition. Seems like all the questions about just honing in on your own intuition. Yeah, yeah. Great reminder and advice. And so does um, Malvite, Mul actually help communicate with ETs. It's that green crystal. I don't know if I pronounced it right. Moldavite. Because it's green, maybe. I don't see the difference of that certain crystal communicating with aliens, us, who, your soul family, anyone out there. Uh, really, communication can be done just by intuition again and speaking forth and just wanting to speak and it doesn't really take any kind of a crutch to do so. If you feel like you're talking to something out there, then you are. If you don't think you are, then you aren't. Simple as that. It's just most, mostly about trusting your intuition. What about creating um, and manifesting um, connections and belief systems of I have this crystal I believe it's going to connect me so therefore it will and then uh, someone's intuition will be more opened up to it because of their belief system that this crystal is helping them is that could that be true it could be they have a crutch in that and then really believe that that could possibly help them and then they might find out one day it doesn't work because we might want to play a trick on them and say huh hey, use yourself Self-empowerment, tough love it is mm -hmm. brush. <laughs> right. Yeah. So all, all empowering. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And then um, another question was, do other crystals have powers um, that most people say that they do, such as amethyst for activating the third eye and citrine for abundance? Have we just covered that in the last question? I, I'm curious. To know. Yes, but, you know, crystals are part of the earth as, as the trees and the grass and the flowers and all to be respected. And if you're giving some love and attention to a crystal, then you're appreciating the earth and Gaia. So it all goes hand in hand. And yes, you know, crystals can, you know, if they're really, if you work them, you know, if you go to a tree, and talk to the tree. The tree is going to respond and you'll feel it if you are allowing yourself to feel the connection. If you think it's all hogwash and that's all it is. But if you really feel like you're feeling the connection, then you feel it. The crystals is more of um, the, you can't actually, because they are crystals, if you're having a really good day, hold the crystal and put your all your happy and joy in there and put it aside. And one day when you're having a really bad day, pick up the crystal that you held before when you're in a good mood and let it cheer you up. 
It's transferring of energy. That's really what they're for. It's just a transferring of energy. You know, and as far as a crutch for communication, that's really within yourself. But it can give you higher vibrations, if that's the case. And um, if you're having a bad day, and grab a crystal that you had, you know, previously put good intentions into and happiness. If that makes sense. It's a little love bank and you put savings in there often and then sometimes you need to withdraw. Right, exactly. <laughs> Cute, love it. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is, will there be ET disclosure, um, but uh, not a false flag, before the shift? There have been talks of that, but let's say this... Um, it's all going to happen at once, more than likely. Is it because there's just not enough time to play it all out as it needs to? We kind of see a presence coming forth as being too much of a distraction. So many people are hanging out for it. That's true. And that's a possibility that, you know, something might happen, but it might be of your government. <laughs> does one really need to see a disclosure for them to accept it and believe in it and be comfortable with the bigger truth yes uh, because you have no idea how much technology the government hides around the world I have suspicions <laughs> yes and they'll, they'll uh there's, you know, possibility they may play with that. And, and, and it, we won't get involved with that if it doesn't cause too much issues, you know, entertainment purposes for, their, you know, but if it's going to cause too much of a, a lower vibrations, we'll interact with it and it won't occur. But it's just, we'll see. And, and, and as you said, there's probably not enough time to, so. Hmm. If there was something that was pretty destructive, that was pretty detrimental emotionally to the human collective, would you just, uh, would the decision to just be made to, to exit point everyone who needs to evacuate the planet, is that how you would have a safety for any nonsense moving forward? That or put a shield up, and some of you who are awake will notice that there's a little difference in the atmosphere. And why does it look like that? Because we put a little shield up, and no one saw anything. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Okay, um, I understand. Thank you very much. Uh, so we just trust that everything will unfold as it needs to, and kind of just focus on our own inner work rather than having these expectations of big entertainment factors at this stage is that what you recommend us to do pretty much yes yeah so the the show is yet to be pretty exciting but you're all going to be part of it so you know and it's it's pretty soon and, and guy is really feeling she's she, she's ready to go she's um done a wonderful job she's a loving being she's supported so much life for so long and, um, you know, she's appreciating the love that she's been receiving. And, um, you know, she's, she's ready to take her final bow. Mm. How is she going with that? She's very patient. Um, she's holding on as to help the rest of humanity to go whatever needs to be done. But we're getting closer. And she's very patient. And, uh, you know, you want to remind the vessel that what she was feeling... Um, Last week when she was feeling the, how it felt the last four or so days of her mom's life and she was on her deathbed and she thought it was mirroring Gaia and it was in a sense, yes, but it was really mirroring the death of her own self and not impairing herself. That's what we want her to know. Oh, fantastic. Because it was a question about, um, she wants to be prepared for the shift and she wants to have, uh, be prepared to know when it's about to occur. And so she did want to ask if that sense, the last four days of her own mother's life would be the same sense she will get before the shift. And what was your information for her, please? We were uh, letting her know the feeling of this 
uh, letting go with this let of something slipping away of that feeling it was mostly to let her know that she's allowing herself to wither she needs to empower herself and it was yeah it's a sense of uh what guy is going through but it was mostly a message for her 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 mother was a sweet soul to come in and to give out a little bit of that for her to say wake up darling I love that for her. I would thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that, that makes great sense. Um, another question uh, that came to me through email was, will it be formally announced that Trump won the election and will he be back in power officially? Not sure if we really have time for that. Uh, for those who are really Trump supporters, they already know the truth. They don't have to keep looking, and they want um, they want to be justified in, in what really happened. This want everyone to know you are finally seeing how the this how the the control has been going on for so long. Not just during this election, not just the last ten years, but for eons of time. You're waking up to really what the control really is. You saw it firsthand. Trump was really good about portraying that. He did a wonderful job. And it's true. You are waking up to really the control factor of how you've been controlled. And that's what was wanted to be done. So uh, it's, you know, the true understanding of that is what was accomplished. As far as it go, as following through, we'll see. Um, more likely we don't have time for that, but you know, you know, but really seeing that the control and how humans and, and every country has been controlled for so long and finally seen the bell lifted there. Wonderful. Fantastic. So for those people who are not spiritual and do not have any intuition for them to be awoken by the events of the election and the the past virus is that all part of the bigger awakening for humanity to get their attention yes i mean to, to really see so you think we're just uh going through all this you know dictatorship and hierarchy and, and, and this this control now Maybe for the last four years, 10 years, 20 years. No, it's been going on for a long time. You're just waking up to it. You're realizing it, you know? So maybe some of those conspiracy theories weren't so far off. Maybe some, I mean, it's just really understanding and waking up to the fact of hello, you know, this has been going on for a while. You're now realizing it and uh, raising the, uh, empowering yourself and raising the vibrations breaks the mold. So congratulate yourself that you did that to see it as a whole. That's a, that's that was as a a collective through humanity that caused that. That's pretty awesome. We applaud. Would you say it's accurate to view those who have woken up to all of that A plus in their spiritual growth? And <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm. Just joking um okay thank you for that it was great confirmation um and it's always significant to know the purpose of these things um even though i feel very compassionate and sorry for those people who are still struggling to understand how um all of what uh, the elections i mean many people are very wounded emotionally and triggered by it still um because they can't see the bigger perspective uh, they will. They, they'll see. Some of them are beginning to see it, and and, and uh, you know, and and the, the what's also is what they're seeing in the president that has and that's there now, and all that's going on, and really pay attention to everything that's being observed and, and realizing something's not right here. Yes, you're waking up. That's great. That's, that's the accomplishment, you know, and getting past that, that's part of the veil, that's part of breaking through. 
it seems like it's quite scary for some people as they are awakening because they feel very disempowered. They feel like there is no hope. I mean, I feel deeply compassionate for those people who are still struggling, um, who have given up hope, who feel like the agenda, is it 21 or agenda 20, 30? I still see a lot of conversations about um, the depopulation and the dark, dark agenda uh, winning and there's still so much fear for those newly awoken people I just just hope yeah, there, there is and we just can send them love and compassion I don't know if any of them are listening but it's kind of like uh, being a child and being told there's no Santa Claus you know that's such a downer uh, for some you know and so but you know once you accept that and realize who was the one that gave you those big Santa Claus presents and then give gratitude to the where it really came from and then to be able to do it again for someone else when you get older. And, you know, uh, it's just, it's just seeing the true realization of it all and not uh, be the victim, but, you yeah, know, empowered. So what you're trying to tell me is there is no Santa Claus? Whoa. <laughs> okay. Spoiler alert. Okay. Unless you want one, you can have one. <laughs> I am my own second baby. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you. Okay, sorry. Uh, so then um, being back to being professional. Um, uh, so are there any souls currently on the new earth? Mm. Well, there is uh, the ones that have uh, been in, involved with the creation. Um, as far as living on the new earth, no. But, you know, I mean, just like a play is a good start. You got to put all the props up and people got to, you know, put the props up and get things already like a creation of something. Is that, there's that. And the creation of that, and there is probably some souls who left and um, helped with that, but not quite there yet. This is that's uh, yet to be inhabited. Mm -hmm. Exciting times! Thank you so much. Um, another question is: uh, Is it really possible to astral travel, and if so, how? In your dreams every night you can always ask what well, you don't do you do different things in your dreams but there's also traveling yes in your dreams some people are able to do it in a meditative state but if uh you can always set the intent to try to uh have a lucid dream and remember when you wake up in the morning and depending on what your team wants you to remember and what has happened and occurred will be allowed because you know got it that's part of practicing your intuition too It's all good practice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so there is a woman on Facebook and YouTube called Gina Maria Colvin Hill that makes pictures and videos, and she claims that they are ships in the sky. Is this true? She makes pictures that she claims are ships in the sky. So she draws them? Uh, oh, sorry, she takes pictures. So it's, it's photos and videos claiming that they're ships in the sky. Well, if you take certain pictures at certain times, the part of the lens can capture because it's uh, different from the retina of the old eye. So that's a possibility. Yeah. And if, if uh, one of our ships want to play a little game, we might show ourselves a little bit in the picture. Okay. Um, so it is possible for our cell phones and our digital cameras to pick up uh, signature frequencies of spaceships. Well, we call them spaceships, but you call them... Um, you know, certain 
of our ships if we want to be seen. Um, you know, I know this vessel has done it where she's taken pictures of certain areas of the sky and found something that was interesting, didn't really know what it was, but decided it was a ship and it made her happy. So, um, you know, that's all fine and good. And we are all up there. So, I mean, there's times when we uh, know what you're doing and we let ourselves be seen. Um, so it's a possibility, yeah. And it's there's sometimes it's all people make things up. Um, it, as far as this individual, I believe she probably has catching some images and maybe some others. She kind of uh, stretched a little bit, but you know, half truth there. Hmm. Yes, I do recall uh, seeing one of her videos. I think and. From a photography point of view, I believed it was more like a lens flare, or actually it was a bug at night. Um, but you know, that was just my intuition. So anyway, uh, you uh, view with caution potentially. Uh, keep the keep an open mind um, and just sense in to your own intuition. I think right. what it seems like though, some people feel very frustrated that they're not they're not being presented with, you know, uh, seeing visually themselves the ship. So then they feel frustrated that they they didn't have this experience. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on for people who feel excluded and included in these events. And, I mean, the truth is out there. We already know that uh, you guys, these higher dimensional beings are out there. We communicate with them all the time. Um not just in these sessions, but just in our daily lives. Um, I think most people here who listen would would not be surprised with that. No, no, we're 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 there. Um, we can even be in your living room in a hologram if we want to be. Uh, it uh, all depends on um, that person's intuition, what they want to feel. You can feel it. I know. Uh, there's quite a few who will be walking meditation or sitting in meditation, feel presence and say it's this or that when sometimes it's just us, you know, we're able to send uh, our signature of ourselves in the sense of a hologram um, in the sense that you can feel it. Yeah. And it's, that's again, you can decide if it's us or it's something else. You can, it's your intuition and the more you empower yourself and, believe and trust your intuition the more you hone in on it and uh that goes with this talking to another human you know you can sense if they're telling you the truth or not you can tell if they're genuine or not uh you can sense if they are needing help or not you know it's uh that's part of intuition as well it doesn't just go for uh different aspects um of things we you know can't be seen with the physical eye but in everyday life as well you with your animals same thing mm, yeah absolutely um is it possible if you if one of the collectives wanted to could they be then the official santa claus would it be possible if you decided if you wanted to would you be able to give presents to every single child in this planet Kind of seems like more of a cruel joke. I mean, if uh, in a sense, if uh, we really wanted to present ourselves, uh, we wanted to do it in a more of a loving nature, not a teasing one. And uh, you know, more of a help of, and you know, there's there is some, you know, rules and regulations we we do follow. Uh, we are not to be intertwined. Um, you know, humanity is to, you know, this, this whole shifting and ascension is a collective, but it's also an individual in, inner work to be done as well. So what one does within oneself affects another for them to do theirs. Um, so if we interfere, then we are taken away from that collective. Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, yes, I can see and respect your perspective. Um, you also did bring up Santa Claus, so I'm just playing the game. Um, but, um, that's fun. Yeah. Um, it would be... If suddenly, if all of humanity was aware of officially the ET presence, um, would that 
um, right now, would the conscious collective panic or would they feel high vibrational? What would, I guess it's um, in general, I should be asking is how will it impact humanity if there was a mass disclosure and you decided to show yourselves? If there was a mass disclosure, we decided to you know, show ourselves. It's because it, collectively as humanity has raised our vibrations high enough where we can lower ours low enough to make that match. Oh, so there won't be mass hysteria. It will be more of acceptance and curiosity. Right. and But right now that hasn't been reached and more likely won't be reached. So that's why things are happening as they are. You know, when, when a shift happens, some won't be quite aware of it and others will. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the next question that I was emailed was, um, there is a man on YouTube called J. Era X, 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 Success, X, S, E, S, S, E, X, um, that makes some very shocking claims. He claims that he is some extremely powerful being that has killed the first male and female beings. I'm not too sure if, he, if he's saying that's Adam and Eve or um, whatever. I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, so the first male and female beings who, oh, who we call as God. Uh, so he is saying he is waiting to exit his body and when he dies, he will flood parts of the world and cause earthquakes and other devastations. Um, there are also more claims, um, but she can't remember exactly what. But what can you tell us about this man called Jay, who is believing that he has killed the original male and female beings and when he exits this lifetime I guess stuff's going to happen if there was any nefarious being making such a statement and making them such an easy target it would make our life our, our job so easy <laughs> uh, so uh, no intelligent nefarious being would be doing such anything like that no that's like a complete target. No, uh, that that individual is just uh, seeing what they're they're playing a game and seeing who they can. Let's see what we can say to get people to believe and who will believe what. Is his agenda to have followings to have people scared that he's going to die? I mean, what's his agenda here? Playing a game, just seeing how many get followers on this. I mean. Uh, I don't do not see uh, it being a, a good agenda, but it looks like um, more of a teenage game. Like a, it just it's this uh, reminds me of uh, what was it back in the 1950s when there was a radio station that talked about UFOs and coming and taking people away and people were just stand by their radios and frightened to death and thought that there was really happening and it was all hoax mm. for just what reason? Well, has he maybe had a premonition or an experience that when he shifts, then all these earthquakes and all these floods and whatnot will happen, which we have heard from when we shift, that will happen. But it seems like he's trying to claim he is he is the crutch of this and that um, I'm not too sure how he has killed the first human beings. Um, I mean, how old is this person? I'm not too sure. I, I feel like I'm starting to become judgmental, uh, <laughs> tapping into him myself. Um, but okay, well, I promised I'll ask these questions since I am. Um, so, hmm. Well, there is, there is going to be some calamity once Gaia leaves. So, I mean, if he's thinking he's going to get notoriety for all of this uh, destruction happening, um, it's not just him. I mean, it's basically a soul leaving, and then what's left is a decaying, you know, planet. So, I mean, maybe this is his way of awakening people in, in a very drastic, scary way, you know? Um, 
but, but it's not, it still seems like a cruel joke. I could have mentioned his followers being very concerned of his health. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm not going to joke anymore. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, then another question that I have is, when speaking of our inner work, what does that entail? Goodness. Well, speaking of our inner work is starting with empowering oneself. Of uh, There's always the analogy of when you're in an airplane, it goes down, the air, the air mass comes down, you have to put yourself to help someone else. So that's a the general way, but it's a, a matter of, um, oh, I guess if a person really wants to make a simple step of inner work is, you know, journal, write down um, things that really make you unhappy. And what makes you really unhappy is whatever events it was. Um, what was your part in that? Were you the victim or were you a part of it? And there's always not just one person's fault. There's always another individual in there. It could be you. And either way, if you're the instigator of that situation or not, you are to release it of yourself and forgive the other or vice versa or both. It's to start there and it's to be completely honest with yourself not just uh, taking the easy ones, but everything you can to remember um, certain parts. Um, that could be started in a work right there and to breathe through and know that everything is purposeful and nothing's out to hurt others intentionally. But if you have intention to hurt, then investigate that too. So I can go, I guess I guess one of the examples I can give. Fantastic. Yes. And I did hear lots of other ways to do it um, throughout the session. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, the, another question is, um, is Trump working with ETs in a physical sense that he has met them in person and is working alongside them? Um, he is a very spiritual being a light worker and has some had some communications of sense um you know there has been some type of communication but it was all, a lot of it was within his own self and getting a direction from others who were also given some information from their teams and uh there is some help but as far as physically I'm, a, a, a physical being that's not of this world I mean we you know a lot of the volunteers here aren't of this world so you can call it that but as far as I'm sure the real question is is uh, someone who is in space and comes down to earth no, not really but there is intelligence given um, that came through people of being you know the intuition of coming through who um, you know had that ability and because they're open to it and he got his direction that way and he knew it and there's there's more to it but we'll leave it at that of course um is it that some people assume that when we connect in with other uh, other species that they all speak uh, our language and that we can hear them um because i feel like there's a, a few problems with logistics Yes, everyone thinks that they speak their language when really it's um, more of uh, telepathic, of uh, coming through with their own words that they're, of they speak, in a sense, of, of the thought coming through. That makes sense. Absolutely, it does. Thank you very much. And then the last question that I have is, what is really going on with Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, I even had to look at what this was, and it just seems like it's a, a certain area near Utah. Uh, that is a high energy area of a portal that they're investigating, and it's almost like um, there's some inner beings playing tricks with them. 
you know. Um, but it is it is a highly active area. I mean, there's some different areas of the world that are highly active with portals and energies and vortexes are used. You know, um, this is one of them. But um, it's being so investigated, it's almost like um, some of the inner beings are just playing. But you know, there's some there's they're letting them disclose some things. It's 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 about time to be some information given that's going to be for some people. Wow, and others like yeah, we know that already. You know, type thing. Mm. Okay. Well, it's um, very intriguing. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to the people that submitted those questions um, because I know everyone's so curious and we want to learn and grow and hear from your perspective being the bigger beings. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself um, for the collectives or the connections that we have been speaking today? I know I called in Karen's higher self. Uh, but is there anyone else that wants to um, connect in and let us know that they were part of uh, providing us this great information today? We had a triple connection of a collective of Pleiadians, Octarians, and Andromedians. All taking our turns. Nice and fancy. Great teamwork there. Um, fantastic. Love it. Okay, and so um, is there a private, sorry, is there a public message that you have for humanity at this time? To live your life as joyful as you can, not look at the mundane things that's so mundane, but, you know, the simple pleasures of uh, walking, of touching, of seeing, of hearing, of tasting, of speaking, those are all uh, very unique and really you're going to find out later very treasure um, much treasure to remember to experience right now and really really embrace it and love it and um, you do that just the simplest things uh, it makes the most mundane anything more interesting and more fun and fulfilled and, uh, and it expresses love for others too it extends it's a good perspective um, and even a new one for us to, to learn and grow from um, in terms of uh, respecting and just appreciating the walking. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. 